हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियो व्हिच वाज मेड ऑन द लेबोरेटरी सेफ्टी एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई हैड एक्सप्लेन व्हाट प्रिकॉशनरी मेजर्स यू कीप इन योर माइंड बिफोर एंटरिंग इनटू द लेबोरेटरी सो दिस पर्टिकुलर यूनिट वी ऑल आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द लेबोरेटरी सेफ्टी नॉट ओनली वी विल टॉक अबाउट द लेबोरेटरी सेफ्टी वी विल आल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द यूनिट्स ऑफ measurement and various type of the mathematical calculations required but uh, before entering into the lab i gave you the 19 rules into the last video that you all have to remember students laboratory can be a very hazardous place if not taken care properly so before entering into the laboratory you must be sure so in this particular lecture i am going to talk about the safety symbols now see students this particular units video series is uh, made and this link of video series is given into the video description box after watching the complete video if you have any doubt you can write it into the comment box definitely i will reply to your doubt student safety symbol when we talk about the safety symbol safety symbol are not only used in the laboratory it can be used to the various places wherever there is a chance of harm or accident so to prevent the people those who are working in that particular area from that accident or from that hazard the symbol safety symbols are been used so in this particular lecture we already discussed what is the importance of the safety symbols and thereafter we will also discuss about the use of safety symbols in our laboratory and the next lecture we all are going to discuss about each symbol in detail what is the meaning of that symbol why do we require that particular symbol and what precautionary measure you must take care when you will observe that symbol the safety symbol and what is the importance why it is required the most important safety symbols it prevents the people working in that particular area from the hazard so safety symbols where we see safety symbol we see it on roads we see it into the hospitals we see into the laboratory we see it into the colleges so various type of safety symbols are there now see uh, we will understand what are the standards means if i have designed any safety symbol the primary concern is this must consist of some type of message and it should be understandable by every person suppose i am Uh, now i stay in india so we all know that in india we have many languages in the different states right so different states have the different language i may not understand the uh, other states language especially south indian language i may not understand what is written so if a written message is given if being indian i don't understand what is written into the malayalam then how the other people those who are coming from the various country will understand so for that reason there is a need for the standardization so this safety sign and symbol were standardized now how by uh, replacing the message with the symbol uh, symbol or you can say the pictorial symbol now why there is a need of the pictorial symbol because it is understood by everyone understood so safety signs and symbol they consist of message it can be having the words also pictorial symbol with the variety of size shapes and colors now see when you all were small you might have observed that your teacher used to check your books with the red pen most of the time why to indicate that the they she used to mark your mistakes with the red pen so it shows this red color circle is the indicator something is wrong at that age your understanding is this much that whatever teacher has encircled into the red color pen is wrong right so this is the idea so all the shapes colors are standardized 
Now each shape has a different meaning, and each color reflects the specific meaning, right? So every color. Now see when we talk about color, also have some message and some idea. So using standardized health and safety signs and symbols will make them understand. Remember, the main purpose of making uh, the safety symbol is what to create the awareness and prevent the people from the uh, hazard. or the accident so this should be understandable and overcome the language barrier just now i gave example that uh, the barrier is that i don't understand my country all language now you all might have observed that i always prefer the language which is understandable by the everyone so to overcome the language barrier we are using the international language most of the time that is english most of the time whenever we go out we prefer the english because uh, now we meet with many state people they all understand the different different language our state language is marathi but everyone is not comfortable to speak in marathi so for that reason to overcome all such barrier what we do we standardize you, you will find that in college various type of students are there from the various states so preferably we speak in english why right? because this is in the, to overcome the barrier she might be talking in some other language he might be talking in some other language so to avoid all such barriers most of the time we use the english language as the international language and new iso 7010 standard is the first step towards the global harmonization of safety symbol means they are making the safety symbol which is same worldwide okay so if it is same worldwide now we all know that the world has become the global town means it's a single place uh, now there is no barrier that we cannot go to the other countries so we can move we travel uh, to the various part of the world so there must be, now if the safety symbol is exactly opposite into the other part of the world so what will happen it is going to create the disturbance so avoid all such things the standard global uh, symbols have been made now see we will talk about the use of safety symbol in our laboratory because here in this unit we are typically concerned with the laboratory safety right so now we will understand the use of safety symbol in our laboratory with the advancement of the biological sciences what happens that new interdisciplinary approaches has come to understand the different principle in a better way so introduction of the chemicals instrument took place that become very essential and this all thing came into the biological science laboratory but uh, when new advancement has come so many of these chemicals are toxic corrosive inflammable carcinogenic in nature similarly all the equipment need for experimentation are extremely sensitive on work example the electric inputs and also maximize the accuracy of the result there is a need that we should know about that things and if you are very new to handle the chemical at least there must be some symbols so this increase the risk of both student as well as the teacher working into the laboratory they do not follow the recommended precautionary measures correctly right so uh, who will follow in our laboratory if you will enter only in our biology laboratory you will find there are more than uh, 500 chemicals are there so all the 500 chemicals even your teacher may not be knowing so what can we do so there must be some symbols so uh, initially to avoid the health hazard by the lab equipments and safety symbol uh, they designed the certain type of safety symbol so first idea came in the mind of the europeans they passed a legislation that legislation uh, is called as the dangerous substance directive 
students you have to remember the name of this legislation i repeat the name of legislation is dangerous substances directives uh, there is some if it is a legislation so definitely it will get the uh, number also the serial number of this legislation is given 67548 eec in the year 1967 for the classification packaging and labeling of the dangerous substance so under this uh, legislation it becomes very very compulsory to classify the dangerous substance under this law the symbol of chemical has that made now european symbols they were means first european started then other part of the world also they started so how they designed uh, initially the european they design the symbols i uh, mean this precautionary symbols um, into the orange background you can see means it is actually orange yellow color background rectangular background and in that they make the black color symbol so this is a uh, very uh, popular this became very popular then in 2009 the international symbols came in existence this pictograms will have the black symbols on the white background with the red color uh, border rhombus so in the 2009 the european symbol were replaced by the international symbol which are now used in even in europe now international symbols are being used so the basic difference between two is that change in the pattern of labeling they make it standard and globalized instead of black printing on yellow or orange rectangle you can see the international has that uh, pictograms are black symbols on the white background and this red border rhombus so this is very compulsory now to have international has that symbol bonding and precautionary phrases on the label of the container bottle with the hazardous chemical so when you will enter into the laboratory you will find that uh, all such type of symbols are there on your chemical so this is this reduces the risk of student this reduces risk over the teachers also so uh, when we talk about the your class that means the fibsc class so you have the higher student teacher ratio so for that particular reason you should be aware and train Uh, about the precautionary steps to avoid any type of mishaps into the laboratory so the label on the chemical bottle should be observed carefully and different safety measures should be adopted while performing the experiment as per the nature and hazard related to the chemical it is not like that just i am teaching you the safety symbols but you must make it into the practice whatever uh, things are being explained means whatever safety symbols are taught to you you must observe it on the bottle and you should understand because with each pictogram i am going to explain you how you all are going to handle it so hence it strongly recommended to make completely oriented about the safety symbols its meaning its hazard related to us and all necessary precautionary measures to be follow while performing into the laboratory so all this thing you must aware before entering into the lab because initially only i told you that lab is a very useful place to perform practical but it can be the most hazardous place if you will not handle the laboratory uh things or chemicals in a proper way so physical hazards what could be the physical hazards physical hazards can be explosive it can be flammable liquid uh, flammable liquid like oxidizing compressed gases corrosive chemical to matter then it uh, could be the health hazard like toxicity skin irritants aspirant hazard not only this there could be the environmental hazard also uh, we all are going to learn all this type of symbol in detail into the next lecture so till now what we all have learned we all have discussed about the safety symbol we have seen that the safety symbols are present on the workplaces which type of workplaces it is required i gave you example that it must be present at the place where there is an hazard 
where there can be accident take place so it could be the construction site it could be the hospitals even in your college you will find some places safety symbols are there where never they are cleaning and that time they keep the board that the floor is wet so that you will not slip so many type of safety symbols are there now it is these symbols are designed to warn the workers and this will always remind you yeah there is a hazard there is a slippery uh, surface over there there is a slope so on road also you will find all the safety symbol now what is the most important thing about the safety symbol that this reduces the risk of accident into the workplace and if the if it is followed properly so it enable the people to work in the uh, very safe environment so what is the use of the safety symbol see first of all the safety symbol should be designed in a way that it should be standard that means it should consist of the message which can be understood by everyone now all the language we may not understand if it is written in some foreign language definitely you and me will not be able to read it even if it is written into the other states of india you and me not be able to understand so there is a need of the standard uh, safety symbols which can be understood by everyone if it is the precautionary message if it is written into the regional language yeah the people if the area is not very much uh, in contact with the international or the other part of the tourists then well and good if it is written in the uh, regional language but if the area is having the footsteps of the foreigner of the other uh, part of the region so that time it becomes very compulsory to make use of the standard safety symbol standard safety symbol consists of the pictorial symbol pictorial symbol means it will have some pictures so it is become very compulsory now to uh, make use of the harmonized safety global harmonized safety symbol means the symbols which can be understood by anyone so the first european started safety symbols and they make uh, it compulsory that means they may bring it into the law so the european union they passed one legislation that is called as the dangerous substance directive in the year 1960 symbol and thereafter in the 2009 it was accepted worldwide so european symbol we all have seen that it is the orange color rectangular background which comprise of the black color symbols and thereafter in the international symbol it the pictograms were black only only the thing is that background is changed that orange rectangular background is replaced with the white rhombus background so this was the basic difference and these designs are international now even the uh, europeans are using the international symbols only so the international symbols which we are going to use in our world laboratory have the three uh, classi classified into the three criteria physical hazard health hazard and the environmental hazard so this is about the use of the safety symbol next lecture we all are going to learn in detail what the safety symbol says so that whenever we are entering into the laboratory and we are coming in contact with any chemical so we will be aware oh this chemical is having this symbol that means this chemical have this type of nature and i must take this type of precaution for this so uh, this particular lecture is very important for you if you don't understand any part definitely you can ask your doubts to me not only this if you feel like oh you have skipped something watch it carefully you can go uh, you can reverse it and you can just repeat the lecture because to understand each and every safety symbol is not only important syllabus point of view but it is very important for your life so it is important student to understand and by heart each and every symbol 
because it is very important for you to recognize all the symbol before entering into the laboratory so for this note for this particular lecture i will stop now mental hazard so what could be the physical hazard physical hazard means the accident what type of accident can be caused by the chemical so it could be the explosive chemical flammable liquids oxidizing liquids compressed gas then the corrosive metal then what could be the health hazard from the chemicals so the acute toxicity can cause then skin corrosion can be caused skin irritation can be caused it can be uh, means the some chemicals can cause the suffocation and the longer usage can cause the aspiration hazard not only this some uh, type of chemical are harmful for the environment so under this category category i have selected the nine symbols which are very important to understand and again and again you will find those symbols on your bottles and you need there's some extra type of care for those chemicals so let us discuss one by one so first is the poisonous or the toxic symbol name itself and the danger symbol is only showing that this chemical is the toxic so all chemicals or their mixtures that are harmful for the environment or for the human health if inhaled swallowed or absorbed through the various port of entry are called as the toxic chemicals i repeat all the chemicals means if the chemical directly itself we are using or their mixtures all these are harmful to the environment as well as the human now how if it is harmful if it is inhaled swallowed absorbed through the skin or various ports of entry this type of chemicals are called as the toxic chemicals some of these chemicals are able to express their toxicity only if they come in contact for a long period hence they are called as the chronic okay chronic means if you are going to use that particular chemical for a longer period of time then only you will be getting the toxicity in normal way one time two time it is not going to produce any effect so such type of chemical are called as the chronic whereas the other chemical that can lead to the death immediately after consumption by the person are called as the acute toxic so chronic toxic long term if you are going to use it is going to produce the toxicity and acute toxic are the chemicals which are going to cause harm even if taken in a small quantity for a single exposure some of these chemicals are carcinogenic note down the term carcinogenic previously also i explained you the meaning of carcinogenic it means the chemical which causes the ca cancer so such chemicals are ninhydrin remember students you are going to use the ninhydrin spray when you will be performing uh, your uh, this chromatography experiment so you are going to use it in a spray so be careful or it may be the tetrahedrogenic such as benzene whereas some are highly toxic name as the hydrogen cyanide cyanide you are uh, you might have heard many of the time that it is the poisonous so it is advisable to either replace this chemical completely if possible or use the alternative chemical which are less toxic or the non toxic but if you are going to use it you must take a proper care so after use of such substances in the experiment it should be exposed of properly to minimize the toxic effect it is not like that while performing practical you will be take care of yourself and you will throw it Uh, where it may come in contact with others so whenever you are disposing such type of chemical you must be very very careful uh, to minimize its toxic effect to the environment or the other animal it is not like that you will throw it to the water body what will happen it will harm uh, to the fish also right so for that particular reason why disposing of certain type of chemical you should be very careful so point to be remember that we will avoid contact 
such type of chemical with skin and whenever we are going to use the toxic chemicals we will uh, make sure that we will take care of our skin by wearing gloves and the safety glasses then whenever we are working we will work with such chemicals under a fume hood and then the most important while disposing also we will take a special care and we will wash our hands properly then next category corrosive name itself is very dangerous corrosive so the substances which can destroy the exposed body tissue or damage the metal part of instrument by the chemical action is called as corrosive i repeat substances that can destroy exposed body part tissue or damage metal part of instrument by the chemical action are called as the corrosive chemical now corrosive effect starts immediately after coming in contact with the target surface such as our uh, surface of skin then cornea of eye or mucus lining of respiratory and digestive tract so all strong acid and strong bases are extremely potential corrosive agent used into the biological laboratory for the various experiments some of this corrosive chemical also have the combustible nature hence they can catch the fire they can burn the object and even they can explode when come in contact with the ignited burner or other such source of fire so while working with this chemical special precaution needs to be taken we should avoid any contact with the body surface by wearing apron without apron i am not going to take you into the laboratory but if you are going to uh, work in other laboratory also make sure when you are coming in contact with the corrosive chemical first wear your apron because it can harm you very badly make sure you are wearing your gloves preventing inhalation of the vapor vapors of fumes by covering your mouth and nose with the mask and preventing ingesting them now this is a very stupid thing to explain you that you are not supposed to ingest any chemical and to avoid such type of Uh, accidents we don't allow you to keep it any chemical in our laboratory as in the last lecture i told you that we are giving you the pipette pumps for pipetting the chemical so but still a uh, special care must be taken it may be on your hand if you are using or you are performing the practical with the bare hands so it may be on your hand and it may come uh, in contact with your food so while pipetting if you are any point if you are pipetting out so make sure that you are using the rubber pulp if the pipet pump is not there we have lots of pipet pump in our laboratory but still we should be careful so what we need to remember about the corrosive chemical uh, first of all the strong acid and strong bases all are corrosive we should not inhale the fumes or we should not make in contact with certain type of chemical so what precaution we all are going to take we will wear apron we will wear the safety glasses as well as we all are going to uh, we, uh, wear the mask also let us discuss the next category of the chemical that is the explosive name explosion we have uh, listened many times so what we need to remember about this type of chemical they are highly reactive substances they have the high potential energy okay so this potential energy makes them capable of producing of an explosion if they are released accidentally or you can say suddenly this can uh, be caused by spark of light heat and sound explosion we know it is the combination of the spark heat and sound although experiment based on this explosive chemical are commonly not included in our syllabus of biological sciences but still to minimize to the risk of learner some of them like picric acid acetic anhydride are used for certain work some of these chemicals are stored in a specific liquid to avoid any explosion such as sodium which is always stored into the kerosene the point to be remember sodium is stored into the kerosene because 
as it can explodes after coming in contact with the moisture some other laboratory chemicals are non explosive themselves but can catch the fire when they mix with the other chemical while preparing the reagent hence it's of utmost importance to use this chemical under specific supervision of the teacher only by taking all the necessary precautions in these steps to avoid any accident in the laboratory so what we need to remember about the explosive chemical that they are highly reactive they can produce the explosion that means they can cause the sparking of the light heat and sound some of these chemicals are stored in the liquid to avoid contact with the moisture because this moisture only making them explosive so example i have given sodium is stored into the kerosene the next category of the chemical is the flammable chemical now flammable name itself is suggesting us that it is going to produce the flame so all those gas liquid and solid which gives out vapor capable of igniting and continue to burn in the air is called flammable chemical it is not like that which can uh, be flamed when they are coming in contact with the uh, this air and start burning so they are called as the flammable chemical so definition is all those gases liquids and solids which gives out the vapor capable of igniting and continuing to burn in air it is important is called as the flammable chemical chemical of flammable nature are mainly liquids which are volatile volatile means which get evaporates in the nature hence all this evaporates very quickly and spread in the air in a short time such chemicals are classified as flammable or combustible based on their flash point vaporization of this substance is mainly depends on the temperature and minimum temperature at which they produce to form ignitable mixture is called as the flash point students you need to remember the term flash point the flash point is the point when the vaporization of this flammable substances which is mainly depend on temperature and minimum temperature so at which they produce the vapor to form ignitable mixture is called as the flash point example if liquid uh, has the flash point less than 37.8 degree celsius it will be called as the flammable liquid example is acetone with the flash point 17.8 degree celsius liquid those whose flash point is higher than 37.8 degree celsius such as nln have the flash point to 70 degree celsius is called as combustible liquid once again we will understand flash uh, point flash point is what it is the uh, point when the vaporization of this substances start catching the fire okay so it is depends on the temperature so the minimum temperature is called as the flash point so if the liquid which is having the flash point is less than 37.8 degree celsius students i repeat the liquid which has its flash point less than 37.8 degree celsius is called as the flammable liquid and uh example of such type of liquid is called as the acetone which has the flash point 17.8 degree celsius and the liquid whose flash points are higher than 37.8 okay we have uh, maintained one term 37.8 so less than 37.8 is flammable and more than 37.8 degree celsius is called as the combustible liquid example is aniline which is having the flash point 70 degree celsius it means if the temperature raises more than 70 degree celsius means if you are uh, burning the liquid so that time its vapor will start catching the fire lower the flash point higher that is right because we know that the uh, it comes across with the uh, room temperature so lower the flash point higher the risk to cause fire hazard in the laboratory hence it is of immense importance while working with such flammable chemicals to avoid any accident to fire by avoiding all the chances of their vapors to come in contact 
with the source of fire there is only one possible solution right student only and only what can we do we can prevent them coming in contact with the air so we will use uh, flame woods to work for such chemical so what we need to remember we need to remember three points that is the flash point is the minimum temperature which causes the uh, this type of substances to catch the fire and if the flash point is below the 37.8 it will be called as a flammable if it is more than that it will be called as the uh, combustible so the chemical material is flammable or combustible this should be Kept away from the sparks and the open open flame. Otherwise, there will be a very big accident into the laboratory. Let us discuss the next category of the symbol. This is related to what? This is related to the health hazard. So, irritants name itself is suggesting some type of irritation is going to produce. So, these are the specific chemical and the physical agent which can cause inflammation. now this inflammation will cause irritation when in come when in come in contact with the body surfaces so if exposure of this chemical to the surface takes place for a long period in low dose it will lead to the chronic effect i repeat if exposure of this irritant chemical to the skin surface take for the longer period in low dose it is going to cause the chronic effect some of these chemicals are also show the acute effect now acute and chronic now by now you all have understood acute means the effect which is causing the immediate effect so some of this chemical also show the acute effect if administered into the high dose at once so majority of organic solvents strong acid strong alkali etc are potentially irritant chemicals which we are going to use regularly for our experiments certain physical agents like radioactive substances ultraviolet light or ionizing radiation are also in same nature that means they are also producing the irritation so that's why you must understand uh, the procedure whatever practical you are going to do you must understand the procedure then only start doing certain type of practical to handle such type of substances while using them into the different experiments not only this you must understand the consequences what is going to happen if you will mishandle the uh, this type of uh, means chemicals so whenever you are doing make sure that you are doing it under observation of your teachers and whenever you required if your teachers are prompting you you will find me that 10 times i am going to prompt and i miss fold you also for into the laboratory for improper handling of the chemical for even if you feel bad i don't mind but whatever it is then this precautions are for your health and to prevent you from the accident so students whenever you are coming in contact with certain chemicals make sure that you will check the symbols next category also we are going to learn which is related to the health hazard that is the aspiration aspiration means it's related to the breathing so the chemical substances which enter in the trachea or lungs that means the part of respiratory tract directly through the nasal or oral opening is called uh, <coughs> open openings will lead to the aspiration hazard means this aspiration hazard chemicals whenever you are using if you are preventing your nasal opening and mouth by mask so that will not harm you much so what we need to remember that the chemical substances which enter in the trachea or lungs directly through the nasal or the oral opening will lead to the aspiration hazard now they are classified as the category 1 if they cause a severe toxicity on aspiration such as turpentine or chlorinated hydrocarbon category 2 when they will cause the lesser toxic effect such as ketone alcohol this aspiration hazard can lead to the pulmonary damage and chemical pneumonia which can even lead to the death use of mask is the possible precaution so when whenever we are doing such type of experiment make sure that we will make uh, use of the mask 
to avoid any type of the aspiration hazard so what we need to remember that aspiration hazard chemical when enter into the trachea through the nasal or the oral opening it can cause the breathing issues if these chemicals are categorized into the two category category 1 severe toxicity and category 2 less toxicity and this chemical not only can cause the pulmonary damage pulmonary term is uh, used for the lung purpose student Uh, chemical pneumonia but they can cause death of an organism by severe suffocation next category is the biohazard now biohazard as material is also called as the infectious material majority of cultured microorganism like bacteria viruses fungi and different parasite with their toxic by products form the biohazard as infectious material so whenever we are using it now see when you all will go in py so hematology practical you all are going to use the uh, blood as well as serum and plasma so that also come in contact with the biohazard only so whenever you are handling this you need to be uh, very careful and these particular substances need to be properly treated before disposing because in the waste what will happen they will start multiplying okay if it is virus now we all are under the severe attack of the virus so we know very well what is the biohazard so this have a potential to cause extensive damage to the other life form in the nature not only this they are capable of causing disease in the human population and even it can cause to the epidemic by causing contamination of the food material now uh, pandemic pandemic word is very much aware pandemic means global level if a disease is spread epidemic in a particular region so wherever this uh, biohazard materials are been exposed so these materials can cause the uh, means this can cause severe harm so experiments using such type of organism are not actually included in this class for you but most of the a laboratory is when you uh, you might most of you might be doing paramedical and all so you maybe you may come in contact but in higher class you are also going to use the biohazard material the most effective method to get rid of this hazard is either by incineration or autoclaving of this specimen immediately after experiment or handling over to the bio waste disposable unit to the municipal corporation municipal corporation has specially designed a uh, bio waste uh, disposable unit okay now see uh, we all are aware that the pandemic covid 19 this is also a bio hazard and this remains this virus remains in the body of the uh, human even after the death so you might have observed that the dead bodies are not ridden the why because that dead bodies are also bio hazards and the a uh, very trained municipal staff they are only handling the uh, matlab last stage the funeral and all the things why because this biohazard material can uh, contaminate the people those who are coming in contact so what we need to remember about the biohazard as material that whenever we are using biohazard as material in our laboratory like bacteria and all you will not have in your fipsc but in further classes you all are going to handle the biohazard as material so make sure whenever you are going to use if you are continuing uh, in this college only so definitely you will not be allowed to do any biohazard material practical without the gloves yes. but if you are working somewhere else in your professional place that time also you must remember that you have to wear the gloves whether others are wearing not wearing you are using any life specimen make sure that you are wearing the gloves and you will dispose the biohazard material very much care then next is the compressed gas so compressed gas in the air are defined as being those with approximate pressure exceeding 1.47 bar as liquid having vapor pressure exceeding 2.94 bars i repeat compressed gases and air are defined as being those with approximate pressure 
now with the help of pressure only we can compress right so the pressure exiting 1.47 bars as a liquid having the vapor pressure liquid pressure is 1.47 bars and the vapor pressure 2.94 bars gases such as oxygen hydrogen helium ethane chlorine nitrogen etc and um, particularly complex air uh, widely used in the industry for and as well as we are using all such gases for the medical purposes depending on the characteristic of the gas it is packed into the metal gas cylinder i will explain you uh, if uh, i will have time in uh, next lecture about the cylinder various gas have the various color of the cylinder so depending on the characteristic of these gases they will have a special color code of that cylinder and in this cylinder the gases are liquefied as sometimes under the high pressure make remain into the gaseous form also the main danger of use of compressed gas arises from the pressure the gas itself is not at all so harmful than its pressure and from the toxic and flammable properties also the helium and hydrogen can can be explosive and it can cause the various harm so the main precaution to be taken is that compressed gas must be used only and only for the purpose which they are used into the authorized means if it is required now you might have observed that the oxygen cylinder are designed for the purpose of for for the purpose of preventing the life of the patients but you might have observed some uh, pet shops they are using for um, packaging the fishes means when you are going to purchase to the pet market uh, fish you have observed they are pouring some gas so they are using the additional gas so they should not be used it can cause the uh, various type of problem horses and fitting should be maintained into the good condition and all these things must be examined on the regular uh, practices so we should remember until and if we are not authorized we should not use the high pressure gas the last we all are going to learn the oxidizing agent oxidizing means it gets oxidized so an oxidizing agent can be defined as the substances that contains oxygen halogen what are the halogen chlorine chlorine bromine and iodine you all have learned into the ninth standard about the elements so they are capable of supporting combustion and intensify the boiling of any fire i repeat this type of gases they are not only support the combustion but also they can intensify the boiling of any fire some example of such oxidizing agents are the nitrates and nitrites chlorates and chlorides hypochlorite then permanganates chromates molybdates and certain inorganic compounds such as nitric acid that are powerful oxidizing agent so all these oxidizing agents use of oxygen as storage room temperature but other requires the application of heat if containers of oxidizing materials are damaged the the content may mix with the other combustible material and they will start fire means as like this only they will not start giving fire but if they will mix with some other combustible material definitely they will start giving you the fire so the risk can be avoided by storing such type of oxidizing material into the separate storage place they should not kept with the other chemical because they will come in contact with the fire so they will cause the uh, means they can intensify the fire so it is dangerous to store powerful oxidizing substances near the liquids that even have the low flash point or even the slightly flammable material it is safer to keep all flammable materials away from where the oxidizing substances are stored so the storage area should be cool it should be well ventilated and of fire resistant construction means it should have it should not be kept into the uh, almira made up of the wood it should be kept in a proper way where there is no chance of mixing it with the flammable substance and not only this we should take the extra care 
about their storage place that it should be stored into the proper place so students what we need to remember about uh, certain type of symbol that whenever we are observing this type of symbol we should recognize that this symbol is main for what we all are also going to repeat this symbol into the practical this is your theory part in the practical also you have the same symbols so you need to recognize the symbol this symbol can be asked for the identification purpose now i am going to make one assignment in the assignment you need to identify the symbol and see no cheating should be done the link of assignment will be given into this uh, video description box only so you while solving the assignment you have to identify the symbol and if you are able to recognize and identify the symbol what thing you need to remember about the symbol you should remember the nature of that agent okay uh, what is the nature of that chemical and what type of harm you can get from that particular substance if you will not take care of it how you are going to dispose this type of chemical not only this you also need to remember that the chemical how the storage of certain type of chemical can be done so this is all about the safety symbol and overall safety part so in the safety of laboratory we have learned about the good laboratory practices we also have learned about the care what you are going to take in the laboratory not only this we have learned uh, about the various importance as well as the use of the safety symbol and in detail this lecture we have learned about the safety symbol so uh, this unit name as i told you what is the name of our unit name of the unit is laboratory safety units and measurement so safety laboratory safety part is over now we all will go ahead of this unit and next lecture onwards we all are going to deal with the units of measurement so for this note for this lecture we will stop now but if you have any doubt definitely you can ask me dear students hope you all have watched the complete video lecture but still after watching the complete lecture if you have any doubts don't hesitate to ask me your doubt you can write your doubts into the comment box and uh, if you want more video updates definitely you can subscribe to the channel thank you for watching watch the videos with a proper care make sure that you are noting all the important points and at the time of the exam definitely this notes are going to help you thank you